You're watching CBS News Los Angeles, The Rundown. Hello, I'm Juan Fernandez, and here's a look at your top stories. A Fontana community is on edge after a hiker was attacked on a popular trail. Police are still looking for a suspect. KCAL News reporter Joy Benedict is working on that story. It was Saturday afternoon in the middle of the day when a woman who happened to be walking along this very popular hiking trail near Fontana was attacked by a man with a knife. Now, police say she suffered numerous cuts because of that attack, but was able to break free and run and call for help. They got the call at around 340 in the afternoon when they arrived. The man was nowhere to be found, and they believe he was trying to sexually assault her. We don't have a lot lot of information about the suspected attacker, just that he appears to be a man in his 20s and he was wearing all dark clothing while on this trail when he attacked that particular hiker. Of course, folks living nearby in this community say nothing like this has ever happened here before and they certainly don't want it to again, but it's leaving everyone really on edge for a very scary and frightening situation as they say that man is still out there. Now, the attack itself happened so far are off the trail or off the main road of Foxborough Drive here in this community that it's actually been handed over to the San Bernardino County Sheriff's Department, which now has detectives looking. But they spent several hours up here Saturday evening with the helicopter, with folks on the ground trying to locate the man that they believe or that they think may have attacked this woman, but they were unsuccessful. So they say this attacker is still out there. As for the woman who was attacked, we don't have a lot of information about her. We do know that an ambulance was called and she did suffer numerous cuts because of this attack. But again, she was able to break free and she is expected to be OK, at least physically, although mentally getting over something like that. Folks in this neighborhood say has to be unimaginable and they are certainly taking extra precautions and being super vigilant when it comes to their own safety until this man can be found. Right, more from Joy coming up here at 4 o'clock. Meantime, there are growing calls to extend the statute of limitations for prosecution of domestic violence, especially in the light of the Sean Diddy Combs security video of him beating his then girlfriend back in 2016. The LA County District Attorney's Office says they can't file any criminal charges because the incident is outside the current statute of limitations. Here now to tell us about efforts in Sacramento to expand protections is State Senator Susan Rubio. Senator, thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Uh, first up, Senator, for those who don't know, what are the current statute of limitations for cases like this? Well, let me just begin by saying that uh, California had not touched the statute of limitations for 30 years. When I started uh, in 2019, I set out to change that. Um, I did have a difficult time. I started with 20 years, and I was forced to bring it down to five. So in 2019, it went from three years to five years. Uh, currently, I'm working on 15 years. This bill has been going through the process since last year. It's SB 690 that would extend the statute of limitations to 15, which I think would have helped um, Cassie in this case. So I just want to send out my, you know, my heartfelt um, sadness to to Cassie because there's no one yeah. that saw that video that doesn't feel the pain and she should have gotten justice. So hopefully this bill can help her. Yeah, I'm sure it's uh, very triggering. So right now you're saying it's three years, you pushed it to five, and now you're hoping the new bill that you're introducing um, would set the statute of limitations at 15 years, which would give victims really a good enough time to to step forward, maybe if they're scared or, or, or what, whatever the, the reason may be, right? This is, a, an, this is something that I talk a lot about, especially to just the general public. We have a misconception that uh, victims are able to just to get up and go. It doesn't work that way. So many victims are suffering in silence because, first of all, they're trying to stay, stay safe. And when they have children or family members that may be in danger, they have to take those into consideration. So we have to allow victims to come out of that relationship or seek justice when they feel ready and more importantly when they feel safe. So giving them 15 years will allow that time for them to heal, seek the help that they need and be able to come forward when they're ready. In this case, uh, Cassie doesn't uh, fit under the statute of limitation mm -hmm. right now, which is at five years. And so hopefully my bill SB 9, uh, 690 will help victims uh, moving forward. Senator, you said you were surprised that uh, it took so much work just to get it moved just a, a few years. Um, when you mention this case or any domestic violence case in, in mixed company, anyone would be 
almost offended that, that a victim can't come forward um, within a, a short amount of time. I mean, it, it is kind of mind boggling, isn't it? Well, you know, I was really surprised when I set out to uh, change it. Initially, it was 20 years. I didn't think I was going to run into uh, opposition because to me, it's common sense that if someone's right. being assaulted and hurt, it should have, you know, they, they should have that ability to come forward. But uh, I ran into that circumstance in 2019. Right now, it's moving through the process very smoothly. So I'm hopeful that we can get it done this year. Well, you are fighting the good fight, Senator. And one more question here. Uh, what can domestic violence victims do in the meantime, if they are outside the statute of limitations? Well, at this point, I just uh, advise to keep all records, videos, audios, whatever they right. have. Um, I did pass other bills, one in particular that's overlooked often. It's coercive control, and I want to tell victims out there, it doesn't always necessarily have to be a physical assault. Be vigilant. I passed coercive control that now victims can also use a coercive control, for example, withholding basic necessities, such as food, uh, funding, whatever they need mm -hmm. to survive. So that also could be brought in as supporting evidence. So hopefully, they look into course of control, which is a bill that I passed as well and can now be used. So just keep evidence, keep uh, documenting. This is a lot of great information. State Senator Susan Rubio, thanks for your time and insight, and please keep us posted on, on the bill's uh, progress. Thank you so much. Have a good All day. Right, you too. Well, if you or someone you know is a victim of domestic violence, the National Domestic Violence Hotline is available to you 24-7. Just call 1-800-799-SAFE or text the word SMART, START, S-T-A-R-T, to 88788. All right, turning now to your weather, let's take a live look outside. Yep, more of that May gray um, here in the Southland. Let's go to meteorologist Olga Ospina now for your next weather forecast. Olga. Hi, Juan. Yes, and we are talking still about some cloud cover lingering for some of us. You can see the hazy skies behind me. Not in the Antelope Valley, though. We are seeing some sunshine there and feeling warm temperatures. That's one of the few spots that is in the 80s this afternoon, 82 degrees. And winds have also uh, calmed a little bit there. Temperature-wise, uh, across our region, even upper 70s uh, for places like Santa Clarita. So we are warmer than where we were yesterday. There are those 80s uh, for the Antelope Valley. As we head into the L.A. area, we're feeling Beverly Hills, uh, 68 degrees, 71 in Long Beach. In to Orange County, mid 70s in Mission Viejo, low 70s in Fullerton, Anaheim also at 70 degrees, and mid 70s for Moreno Valley into San Bernardino and Fontana, 77 in Hemet. So it's a warm day out in the IE, 95 in Palm Springs. Here's a look at our radar. So that cloud cover is peeling away, but still a little bit of haze for some of us. And the temperature change map showing us numbers are up. We started clearing out a little earlier today versus yesterday. So that's allowed for a little bit more warming, especially for some of those higher elevations uh, through the Antelope Valley and the Santa Clarita Valley as well. Numbers today topping out in the mid 80s uh, for the high desert and still comfortable for the valleys into the Inland Empire, mid to upper 70s. 69 for LAOC Metro and mountains. These numbers still running below average though. And 66 along the coast, starting to see some sunshine there as well. But the winds have really calmed we're seeing some uh, stronger winds out still through the I-5. All this is below advisory level. A little breezy, but not seeing those strong gusts that we were experiencing over the weekend and even yesterday also. Here's a look at future cast. So we are going to remain dry over the extended period. We do have this trough of low pressure that's going to keep temperatures cool. It's also going to continue with that marine layer in place, although today and tomorrow are going to be the nicest days. We're going to clear out a little bit earlier, allowing for a little bit more warmth. Warming. But look at what happens as we head into early next week. Monday, of course, is Memorial Day. We start to see this ridge of high pressure moving in, and that's going to bump up our temperatures by a few degrees. So we're looking at a really nice holiday as we head into next Monday. Tomorrow, pretty similar to what we are expecting today. Low 70s for Simi Valley into Burbank, downtown Los Angeles, 71. There are the mid 80s for the Antelope Valley and warm temperatures for the Inland Empire. Also, even some low 80s for San Bernardino into Riverside. And and of course, still another hot one out in the low desert. Palm Springs topping out at 97 degrees. Next seven days, LA OC Metro, low 70s and upper 60s will be the story. Warmest day Monday. 
Next seven days in the valleys, upper 70s, a bit of a cool down. There's that cool down on Thursday into the weekend, but numbers start to build once again as we head into early next week, back into the upper 70s and some 80s, even for places like the Inland Empire. Memorial Day Monday, expect temperatures in the 80s and some sunshine. So a good Memorial Day holiday forecast for you. The desert also seeing that bit of a cool down as we head into late in the week, but temperatures rebounding nicely, except the coastline. If you are headed to the beach, just keep in mind uh, plenty of cloud cover there and uh, temperature is not really getting out of the 60s uh, for most of you. Juan, back to you. All right, Olga, thank you so much. We want to go to some breaking news right now. Desmond Shaw live over the end of a CHP pursuit on the 5 freeway in the Santa Clarita area. Desmond, uh, what's going on down there? Uh, Juan, this is on the northbound side of the 5, uh, just past uh, Valencia Parkway. Here you see CHP. They're moving the vehicle off of the freeway right now. It was this Ford Explorer with some expired tags wanted for an illegal U-turn. It started all the way in Glendale, but CHP was not messing around on this one here. They did a spike strip back at McBean Parkway. The driver ran it over, and the, after their tires separated, they immediately gave up. So fortunately, they're making quick work of this for everyone trying to commute through here. Northbound 5 through, wow, really remarkable timing here. Here as they are getting the vehicle off of the freeway and all lanes are reopening. So one driver in custody and we should start to see uh, the lanes clearing here right now. Live at Sky Caliber Head, I'm Desmond Shaw. Juan, back to you in the studio. Yeah, amazing, Desmond. There's a CHP officer uh, basically releasing the cars from that traffic break. Uh, CHP officers being very efficient uh, with their time. All right, thanks so much, Desmond. We appreciate your report. Now to a little girl who is about to make history at 11 years old. She's about to become the youngest person to graduate from Irvine Valley College. Our Michelle Geely spoke to her this afternoon. We're in San Juan Capistrano at Athena Ellings' home. She is the youngest person ever to be graduating from Irvine Valley College just 11 years old. This is going to happen on Thursday. Uh, her mom, Christina Chow, is with us, and thank you so much. Um, Athena actually has a final in a couple of hours, so we're gonna speed our interview up so she can get there to take her test. Athena, tell me a little bit about why you wanted to go to college so young. Um, so initially it was because I was really competitive with my brother and so he had to go to community college because he literally ran out of classes at the online school we were going to. So he went to community college and I said, oh, I want to do that too. Um, so I started taking math classes there, but then um, I realized I did not like math at all. Um, so I just started uh, taking classes there officially as a high school student. And mom, what's it like to have two kids now who yeah. will be college graduates? This is with uh, AA degrees, right? Yeah. At 11 years old. Uh, it makes me feel like, what have I done with my life? Um, <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's great. For those people who are saying, is 11 too young? As a mom, you say? You know, it's driven by them. It's what they want to do. And so as a parent, I think you can be a cheerleader and a chauffeur and clap, be along for the ride. I was one of those. I appreciate that. Athena, best of luck to you. Have a blast Thank at you. graduation. And I know that you told me that you're going back to Irvine Valley College because you want to get, what, one or two more AA degrees? <laughs> Probably I want to get them in maybe musical music or theater or um, yeah, or maybe psychology. Yeah, the world is her oyster, right? All right, good luck, Athena, on that exam later this afternoon. This has been CBS News Los Angeles, The Rundown. I'm Juan Fernandez. Thanks for joining us. We'll be back live at four right here on CBS News Los Angeles.